Good day. Hope everybody's staying healthy out there. Um, in my family, we were kind of knocked out for two, three weeks here, fell behind in the shop a little bit with a little something that's been going around. Um, I didn't have it that bad. Lost my taste and smell for a good two weeks. Wife, on the other hand, having four kids at home, she slept, I think, for three days solid and did not feel good. Um, trying to get back out here and get, get things normalized again. But um, kind of this is going to be kind of a pay it forward video. Thank you guys for watching and liking and, and helping me out with, for, with views. Um, I've been thinking about how to approach this video for a while now. Um, today we're going to be dealing with, that's all I've been doing the most lately, is the Echo 7310. And I know there's a lot of guys out there that are do-it-yourselfers. Um, I've got a little bit of a setup here to get some port correction. I would... I would classify this saw as kind of a detuned model. Um, a lot of echo saws are kind of sitting in that same boat because they, they aren't using the strato technology or they're just now beginning to use the strato technology uh, to, to meet emission standards. So they have to find other tricks um, other than you, you know spending their, their uh, EPA credits on on importing into the United States. That's a whole nother um, conversation for another day. But I'm gonna show you how to correct the side transfers, do a little bit of exhaust work and a little bit of intake work. What this will do for you is basically get about 15% or a little bit more. Your throttle response, which is really my only gripe about a stock 7310, uh, we'll get that up in into the 461, close to the 562 range. We'll, we'll make this thing quite a bit more snappy. Um, this won't be a conventional way that I port saws. I'm not going to use a timing wheel. I'm going to do this with anything that you guys can have at home um, with the little tricks and how to reference ports and give you a couple options on how you want to do it. Um, First off, we're going to start with the transfers. I am using a wide angle lens for moment on my on my uh, Pixel phone. So the view is kind of a little bit weird, but it allows me to get to focus really up close so I can show you exactly what I'm doing. I'll explain a little bit on the transfers on this saw. It does have dual feeds in the bottom. Um, one considerably larger than the rest. And then there's a splitter up here into basically six transfer ports, three on either side. Now you can see how, let's get a little more light in here. You can see that the primary, which is actually on the exhaust side, opens at around 123 degrees-ish. Um, and then the other two open at 144. They are extremely delayed. Um, it's it's all in their plan to meet emissions. Um, we're going to correct that. We're going to raise them up to uh, the the two quads on the intake side. We're going to raise them up to within two degrees of the primary, and uh, I'll show you how to do that. First, I'm going to have you take a ring. Yes, I already did that. I'm going to have you take a ring, put it down in the port, and then I'm going to have you run it. So it is level with the primary, that large transfer you see on your right. And you can see you just cannot see it just now. And pull your fist from back out. And now you can see how delayed the openings are for those quads on the intake side. What we're going to do is leave that ring in there and be careful not to touch it, but we're going to, we're going to flatten the actual in the intake angle, we're gonna bring this lip down right here. We're gonna bring, in this case, this we're gonna bring it up and flatten that entrance. So we're gonna we're gonna modify here eventually, we're gonna modify the transfer cap so your charge comes up this way, hits a roof, and slides straight across that piston. We're gonna get a little bit more 
efficient scavenge angle on that. In order to do this, and I did one the day before, you're gonna have to clean this extremely well and then fill it with epoxy. JB Weld, not the quick weld. Um, they have cold weld from Fermatex, which I like because it gets pretty hard. Um, that's gonna allow us to raise the inside of this up and then flatten it out. We will actually be grinding into the epoxy. Um, without that epoxy in there, you would literally make a hole in this transfer cap and that's no bueno. This is what the cap looks like without any epoxy in it. You can see how thin it is and you would literally grind a hole right inside of it. I'm gonna pop this cap off. And we'll go through the, uh, the epoxy process here. And these things are on there tight. You can see how it just pops right off. Now what I'm gonna have you do is you wanna clean this very good when you go to, to put it back on. What I'm gonna have you do is rough up this surface all the way on the inside, all the way to this edge. You wanna get a good adhesion surface and make sure it's extremely clean We're not trying to grind away material, we're just giving the epoxy something to bite to. Take a little sandpaper and make sure it's nice and roughed up inside there. So at this point, we have a surface that looks like that. Nice and roughed up. Gives the epoxy something to settle into. up some epoxy. Definitely a scientific measuring method right there. I like to use a pick. Mix it up good. Then what we're gonna wanna do, so we make sure we don't get any bubbles in here, we're gonna start towards the center and lay it in. And let it kinda just flow down into the crevices. If you get a big bubble in there, you're gonna grind through it. And we want all the surface adhesion area that we can get. I want this completely filled up. Once you do this, you want it to set overnight. Make sure you're agitated a little bit. Make sure you don't have a bubble in there. 
And this will all flatten out. I take a wire wheel to it once it's hard. And I just put it in my uh, in my vise here to set overnight, nice and level. Now that we got our epoxy setting up and I have my ring set in there, we're gonna wanna grind these at a 90 degree angle flat um, to the point where we're about a 16th of an inch away from that ring. We don't, we don't want the quads to open it at the exact same time as the primaries. I have tried that, I've tried to go past. Um, what you will run into is a lot of fuel loss. It's just too much, it's too much time and area at idle. Yeah, you'll gain a little bit on the top end, but it, it becomes difficult to get the saw to idle properly. Um, it, it just slobbers gas and oil. Um, it doesn't matter how much you lean it out. Um, I, to the point where if you lean it out enough so it idles properly, uh, then your throttle response suffers because you don't have enough fuel on the low side. So I'm just gonna do a little bit of grinding here um, and then show you the end result. Like I said, we're doing all this with stuff that you guys can do at home. You can use a Dremel. I really like, obviously, Milwaukee tools, good carbide, um, so I don't have to carry my air around or a hose coming off of a grinder. That coatings are very hard. So the initial cut in will be quite difficult. We're just flattening that roof. We're changing the entrance level. Or angle, not level. I like to have a little bit of oil on the side. Keeps it from aluminum transfer from sticking in. I'm going to stretch them both back towards the intake slightly. This is all on the transfer side, so you don't have to have beautiful clean ports, micro polish it at all. Flatten that out just nice. Clean it up a little bit, and then we'll move to the far intake side one. Cut right in. This one's a little bit more difficult to reach. because of the angle and how far away it is from the wall of the, the exterior of the cylinder. Got that flat, cleaned out. Spray this out. Now you can see we're within, maybe. Now you can see that we're within about two degrees of the opening time of the primary. 
and you can see that new angle. There we go. That new angle coming in. Of course, I'm gonna clean this up a little bit, uh, make sure there's no burrs on there that can get caught up in the transfer. But uh, that's about how you want it to look. You can see how much we've raised the, the angle on the quad transfers. Now what I'm gonna have you do, before I clean that up, I'm gonna have you take the cap. Of course, I did the wrong one. Put the cap back in, like so. This is the fresh one. It's already set up decent. I'm gonna have you take a pick. And you can see how much that has changed where that cap meets up. I'm gonna have you take a pick and I'm gonna have you make a line right there, right there, basically tracing the shape of the port onto the cap. Kind of hard to see for you guys, but you get the gist. What we're gonna do is that we're referencing the new shape of the quads coming into the cylinder. Now, bigger is not better. I've tried it about every way. So what we're gonna do is cut this back right here. You can see where I where that transfer port is, and then let's see here where the witness line is for that transfer. You can see how far we've raised them, and we're going to change the angle. And the next, I'm going to have to scribe onto the other one so I can grind on that. This one's still too fresh, uh, too soft on the inside. All right, I'm going to do my my best here to catch the angle and, and what I'm trying to do with these caps. I showed you the witness lines. I'm gonna try to step in between here. Again, something you could have at home. You had another Dremel. I like this one because it's variable speed. And if I don't need a right angle or anything, and then, I mean, it's just, it's just handy. I, got, I have good um, control over where I, I run my carbide. Um, nothing wrong with more tools. One tool for every, for every job. So we're gonna cut that down to that line. I like to use the quarter inch first because I can remove a lot more material faster. I'm gonna go over to this one. Try to make that nice and flat. decent that's where we're roughed in I'm gonna take my eighth inch and get right down to that line and clean up the shape a little bit you can see how far we went into the epoxy well that'll happen Well, I want this very thin on the end, right here. 
because that goes all the way to that single cylinder wall. Clean up that divider. Like so. Clean up this transition area a little bit. Now I'm going to flip over. It's going to be kind of hard to see. I'm going to, I'm going to match this side cap right here to the channel that's flowing to the transfer. Just a little bit. Make sure it's a smooth transition. A little less coffee probably would have been a good idea. Like so. Like I said, this doesn't have to be super smooth. As far as surface area goes, it just has to be a smooth transition for the flow. Just like that. Now, it's my actual Dremel Dremel. Another battery. I like these stones just to kind of take the high ends off. Let me get in there a little bit better. one completed transfer cap. Now you can see that it looks like they're quite a bit higher yet than the primary, but at the wall, there's still a little bit of an angle. So that feeds right into that thicker part of the cylinder right in here. And then it still has a slight angle to it. So that is what you want your cap to look like. You can see how we went in through into the epoxy. I'll do the other one up here in a little bit with the cap back on there. You can see the transition now, how close I can get here. You can see the transition now in between that cap. And those two quads and how much closer they are in timing. Now we're going to move on to the exhaust and then we're going to do a little bit of intake work um, and then we'll put the cylinder back together. All right for the exhaust, about my camera here, you can see there's a ridge or you will see once you have yours apart that there's a ridge all the way around there we go all the way around the port where it matches the cylinder wall um, you can also see how curved put a ring back in here quick how curved that exhaust is they're opening <clears throat> at about 106 but they're opening with so much curve that they don't have much They have time, but they don't have much area. I'll try to put that at the bottom of that curve so you can see. So they have the time at about 106, but they also don't have much area. See how much curve there is to the roof of that exhaust? Um, and there is a, on the piston, there is a ring pin locator on the exhaust side. You would have to go quite wide to get into it. But what we're gonna do is on the right and the left side, we're gonna go all the way to the edge of, of that, um, I don't know, ridge you'd call it. And on the top, 
I'll show you here in a second where I'm gonna have you um, flatten the roof just slightly and how to measure where you wanna move it to. <clears throat> so what we're gonna to wanna to do is put one ring in. We're gonna put a second ring in. I'm gonna have you run both rings in. So you just, the bottom ring touching the piston is barely visible. Just barely see it. There's the top of your piston. And there's that, that bottom ring with the two rings in there. Pushes them up in there flat. I'm gonna have you take a pick. Bring the ring in here. And have you pull the ring that was touching the piston out. Again, for the, this is for those that don't know how to use a timing wheel, um, you do it yourselfers, you sit at home. And want to know how to get a little bit more performance out of this saw. Now you can see right there, we're about one ring width above the exhaust port. And we're gonna go up to that ring. That is not gonna go on the top side, that is not gonna go all the way through that I don't know, yeah, that landing or however they want to explain it. But I'm going to do half of it here and show you the differences so you can get a good visual on what you want your exhaust port to look like on this cylinder. All right. So this is rough. This is just roughed in. You can see how I went up to the ring in the center and then slowly angled it away from the ring over here on this side. That gives it a little bit of a curvature to tuck that ring. And you can see how I removed that flange on the inside. Of course, I need to lift the, the roof a little bit yet, um, but there you can see the difference in between the two and I need, and after I smooth it out, it'll look a lot better, but I'll give you a little bit of a reference here. You can see how that angle on the right starts to close off the port right there. But you can see that I've got a good tuck where it starts from the left to feed the ring back in towards the center and the center closes last. And that's where my ring is right there. So you wanna do that to both sides. That'll keep you away from that, that ring pin locator. Should be on this side, either way but that'll give you some exhaust width, um, better, better area for the timing, and that'll end you up somewhere in like the 104 range as far as your exhaust timing goes. Now, this is very thin. You can't make these exhausts, the, the port itself, huge on these. Uh, I wouldn't say that's an eighth of an inch um, with my finger micrometer. Um, and it's not necessary. These huge exhaust ports with not much supporting the muffler, I'm not really a fan of. Um, we do give them a little bit, you know, we give them a little bit more area, but, but a huge exhaust doesn't necessarily gain you anything. Um, I'm gonna finish up this port. I'll show you the finished product on that, and then we'll move on to the intake. Show you our basically finished exhaust port, a little bit more polishing, but Right there is about the shape that you want. And I'll put the piston in there as a reference so you can see the actual port shape. You can see how it isn't ramped as far on the sides and how it starts to feed the ring in on the sides and then closes lastly in the center. That exhaust port has quite a bit more area per the time it's open. Gives a little bit more throttle response. Beyond to the intake here. All right, so on the intake, all we're gonna do is widen it by a 16th of an inch on either side. And then we're going to, I'll show you here. We're gonna flatten the, roof, the floor of it ever so slightly. And that's all we're gonna do. 
And I heard a rumbling outside. It was UPS. Showed up with another one. Thanks, Zach. I think this is number 19. 19th one coming in and out of here. I'll grind on this intake a little bit and show you the result. Got our intake squared off a little bit. Wrong end. Intake squared off. Width about 16th of an inch wider. Right there. That pretty much completes what you can do with normal tools at home on a, your wood sport. Um, this is not my wood sport. I do a compression bump. Um, a little bit more aggressive on the timing, but for guys that are do-it-yourselfers at home, this reminds me of when they had the 365, 372X torques. The 365, the only difference really was a splitter inside the transfer cap, and guys were popping the cylinder off and removing that splitter, essentially making it a 372. Um, they do very similar things in the 550 to the 545. The transfer caps are smaller in the 545. And all the way down the line to the 565, doesn't have crank stuffers uh, like the 572. And, the, and um, the transfer caps on the 565 are about 25% smaller volume. So that's how they detune these things. Um, yeah, I don't know. I could probably, if you guys are interested, do like a 359 tutorial on how to make them outperform a 357. That is a super easy cylinder to work on also. But uh, I know there's a lot of guys out there that that started out like we all did, um, fidgeting around with port timing and compression ratios and, um, and blow down and whatnot. Um, moved on eventually to carb work and epoxying things. And it's a road you just, <laughs> you get on and, and it just never seems to end. But uh, this is a good starting point for you to understand how transfer time slash area will make a difference, especially in a saw like this. Um, going forward, I gotta wait for that cap to, <clears throat> the epoxy to seal, settle in, um, cure, but we're gonna glue this back together. Uh, make sure you get this all nice and cleaned out. Use a good Yama Bond. Um, I like to use Moto Seal from Permatex because I have it readily available everywhere. Honda Bond, 3 Bond. Just use a good sealing material. Now on this saw, for the, you guys that like to run to delete the, the base gasket, the base gasket in this one is kind of a funky material that likes to flake off when you pull the cylinder. I would recommend if you're gonna put a base gasket back in it to order a brand new one. I would not mess around with this cheap little part that may have a little bit of an air leak someplace where, where material is flaked off. There is enough room in the squish to go gasketless. Um, the only thing I'll say about that is make sure you get your surfaces extremely clean. Take some sandpaper here, clean this off, uh, clean your the case on the saw really well, get some uh, good brake cleaner wipe it down, get both surfaces with a light coating, let it tack up, bolt it together, and wait a day. Yeah, there's guys that just throw them together and run them, but it's a lot of work. Um, you can wait a day, let it seal up properly. You're gonna end up with these mods, gonna be about 165 pounds of compression, um, which, is, which is great. Um, you'll get good throttle response out of this, and uh, yeah, oh yeah, muffler. So, you'll have to take this off and then you'll put it on your cylinder here so you can case match or exhaust match this exhaust gasket and then I put it back on the cylinder and I and I just match match the gasket itself. So that's how you mat, match that. Um, the exhaust on these is completely hollow. I don't have a screen requirement here in Iowa so the screen is out of here, this is stock. I like to put a hole in the side, and I like a deflector. I've never really been a fan of the pipes. They look cool, they sound awesome, but when you're cutting a lot and you've got wood right up against the face of your saw, um, 
it tends to either burn the wood or blow chips in your face. The deflector spreads the exhaust out a little bit better. Uh, keeps stuff from kicking back in your face and, and sawdust running all over the place. But yeah, that's how I like to do mine. There's just a hole underneath there. It's not pretty. I don't care. It's effective. Sounds cool. So yeah, um, I'm sure I missed something. I'll probably think of something later, but that gives you kind of the rundown and on uh, detuning these 7310s. It's a long video, so if anybody made it to the end, thanks for watching. Give me a like if this is stuff you want to see in the future. It is time consuming, but um, I think it's definitely worth it to give back to the community as far as uh, information and um, yeah, just the camaraderie of it. So thanks for watching.